Well, praise be to the name of the Most High, the Am, that I am, I'll be what I will be, the one who was, who is, who is to come, that's the one whom we worship, and uh, his name is yod tev and also Elia, Asher Elia, and uh, many other variations um, of the true name. But uh, there's no redemption other than through the blood of Jesus Christ, through Yeshua, the Messiah. And it's about time that the true believers in Jesus Christ realize that, you know, he, ha he has a Hebrew name, he has an Aramaic name. Not everybody in the world who's confessed him calls him Jesus, you know. Just got to recognize that. But he's the son of the living God. And um, he actually said that he came to magnify the law and not do away with it, okay? Now this is a prophecy in Isaiah 42, 21. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. This again is echoed in Romans 3, 31. Um, do we therefore um, make void the law? No, we establish it by faith, okay? Um, this is what Jesus Christ came to do again. Not, not what you think he came to do through the false churches telling you that he came to do away with the commandments of God. No, he came to magnify the commandments of God. And today, this this is the exercise we're doing. This is the reason I'm making these videos today. And we'll start with um, some prophecy. It says, To heed the call of every prophet in each generation, provided that he neither adds to or takes away from the Torah. Deuteronomy 18.15, which exactly Christ fulfilled it and did not say that it was done away, he came to magnify it. Every jaw and tittle would be accomplished um, until, not until heaven and earth pass away. Heaven and earth hasn't passed away yet. Ne the next one we have is not to prophesy falsely, Deuteronomy 18.20, and the penalty for that, not to refrain from putting a false prophet to death, not to be in fear of him, Deuteronomy 18.22. So many have prophesied about the second coming of the Lord. Many have falsely prophesied about false messiahs, which they, they do deserve stonings. But of course, the Temple Mount faithful won't do that because they have their own interpretation of the law. But Christ came to make the law honourable. Okay, it's very important to realise that if you're Jewish. Okay, now you can be even more a Jew when you accept um, Yeshua into your your life. Give him your life, in fact. Now the next set of um, laws are to do with um, idolatrous practices, not to make a graven image, neither to make it oneself, nor to have it made by others. Exodus 24, not to make any figures for ornament, even if they are not worshipped. Exodus 20:20, 20, 20. not to make idols even for others. Exodus 34:17, Leviticus 19:4, not to use the ornament of any object of idolatrous worship. Deuteronomy 7.25 Not to make use of an idol or its accessory objects, offerings or libations. Um, Deuteronomy 7.26 Not to drink wine of idolaters. Deuteronomy 32.38 Not to worship an idol in the way in which it usually is worshipped. Exodus 25 Not to bow down to an idol even if that's not um, made of for worship. Exodus 25, not to prophesy in the name of an idol, Exodus 23.13, Deuteronomy 18.20, not to hearken to one who prophesies in the name of an idol, Deuteronomy 13.4, not to lead the children of Israel astray to idolatry, Exodus 23.13, not to entice an Israelite to idolatry, uh, Deuteronomy 13.12, to destroy idolatry and its appartences, Deuteronomy 12.2-3, not to love the enticer to idolatry, Deuteronomy 13.9. Not to give up hating the enticer to idolatry, Deuteronomy 13.9. Not to save the enticer from capital punishment, but to stand by at, at his execution, Deuteronomy 13.9. A person whom he attempted to entice to idolatry shall not urge pleas for the acquittal of the enticer, Deuteronomy 13.9. Person who has attempted to entice shall not refrain from giving evidence of the enticer's guilt if he has such evidence. Deuteronomy 13.9 Not to swear by an idol to its worshippers, nor cause them to swear by it. Exodus 23.13 Can't obviously say that anything can be an idol these days, even pornography, 
um, basically sports, anything can come before your worship um, to God and understanding and fulfillment of his commandments and uh, your ministry to him. And this is why we need the blood of Christ to wash us clean. So that we just rebuke any spirits of idolatry now in the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Um, not to turn one's attention to idolatry, Leviticus 19.4. Not to adopt the institutions of idolaters nor their customs, Leviticus 18.3, Leviticus 20.23. 20, Obviously that's referring to the Catholic Church there. Not to pass a child through the fire to Molech, Leviticus 18.21. Okay, so you've got Bohemian Grove and all that, all these people been practicing these things for hundreds of years. Not to suffer anyone practicing witchcraft to live, Exodus 22.17. Not to practice one and observing time seasons as favorable or unfavorable using astrology, Leviticus 19.26. Okay, that's uh, with regards to like NASA firing a... Um, craft into space and you know they'll tell you the, the, the right season to do that obviously it's to do with mathematics in, in that situation but this is more to do with um, as astrology basically that's what that is not to practice um, Nakesh doing things based on signs or um, portents using charms and incantations of Ecus 19.26 not to consult Ovoth, which is ghosts, Leviticus 19.31, not to consult Yadonim, wizards, Leviticus 19.31, not to practice Kisov, which is mag magic using herbs, stones, objects that people use, Deuteronomy 18.10, not to practice Kesem, a general term for magical practices, Deuteronomy 18.10, not to practice the art of Koverhaver, Casting spells over snakes and scorpions, Deuteronomy 18.11. Not to inquire of an orb or ghost, Deuteronomy 18.11. Not to seek the matim, dead, Deuteronomy 18.11. Not to inquire of yid oni, wizards, Deuteronomy 18.11. Not to remove the entire beard like the idolaters, Leviticus 19.27. Not to round the corners of the head as the idolatrous priests do, Leviticus 19.27. Not to cut oneself or make um, inc incisions in one's flesh in grief like the idolaters, Leviticus 19.28. Not to tattoo the body like the idolaters, Leviticus 19.28. Not to make a ball spot for the head, Deuteronomy 14.1. Not to plant a tree for worship, Deuteronomy 16.21. Not to set up a pillar for worship, Deuteronomy 16.22. Not to show favour to idolaters, Deuteronomy 7.2. Not to make a covenant with the seven Canaanite idolatrous nations, Exodus 23.32, Deuteronomy uh, 7.2. Obviously, may be written in the book of Revelation about that. Obviously, Obama's making covenants with nations and so on. Not to settle um, idolaters in your land, Exodus 23.33. To slay the inhabitants of a city that has become idolatrous and burn that city, Deuteronomy 13, 16 and 17. Not to rebuild a city that has been led astray to idolatry, Deuteronomy 13, 17. Not to make use of the property of uh, the city that has been so led astray, Deuteronomy 13, 18. Okay, this is to do with agriculture and husbandry. Not to crossbreed cattle of different species, Leviticus 19:19. Not to sow different kinds of seed together in one field, Leviticus 19.19. Not to eat the fruit of a tree for three years from the time it was planted, Leviticus 19.23. That the fruit of fruit-bearing trees in the fourth year of their planting shall be sacred, like the second tithe and eaten in Jerusalem, Leviticus 19.24. Not to sow grain or herbs in a vineyard, Deuteronomy 22.9. Not to eat the produce of diverse seeds sown in a vineyard, Deuteronomy 22.9. Not to work with the beasts of different species yoked together, Deuteronomy 22.10. Clothing, that a man should not wear women's clothing, Deuteronomy 22.5. That a woman should not wear men's clothing, Deuteronomy 22.5. Not to wear garments made of wool and linen mixed together, Deuteronomy 22.11. The firstborn, to redeem the firstborn human male, Exodus 13.13, 13, Exodus 34.20, Numbers 18.15. 15. 
to redeem the firstling of an ass, Exodus 13, 13, Exodus 34, 20, to break the neck of the firstling of an ass if it's not been redeemed, Exodus 13, 13, Exodus 34, 20, not to redeem the firstling of a clean beast, Numbers 18, 17, Kohanim and Levites, that the Kohanim shall put on priestly vestments for the service, Exodus 28, 2, not to tear the high um, Kohanim's uh, robe, Exodus 28.32, that the Kohanim shall not enter the sanctuary at all times, at times when he is not performing service, Leviticus 16.2, that the ordinary Kohen shall not defile himself by contact with any dead other than immediate relatives, Leviticus 21.1-3, that the Kohanim defile themselves for their deceased relatives by attending their burial, and mourn for them like other Israelites who are commanded to mourn for their relatives. Leviticus 21, 3. So that would put in context, let the dead go and bury their, their own dead and follow me. That's what Jesus Christ says. Um, obviously, this is, um, could refer to a royal priesthood as well, these laws, but obviously they're eff effectively a Kohanim, first of all, which are Levites. The Kohanim who had an immersion during the day to cleanse him from the uncleanliness shall not serve in the sanctuary until after sunset. Leviticus 21 6. That Kohanim shall not marry a divorced woman. Leviticus 21 7. That Kohanim shall not marry a harlot. Leviticus 21 7. That Kohanim shall not marry a profane woman. Leviticus 21 7. To so honour to a Kohanim and to give him precedence in all things that are holy, Leviticus 21, 8, that high Kohanim shall not defile himself with any dead, even if they are relatives, Leviticus 21, 11, that high Kohanim shall not go under the same roof with a dead body, Leviticus 21, 11, it's been learnt by tradition that a Kohanim who does so violates the prohibition, neither shall he go in, um, also prohibition he shall not defile himself that the high Kohanim shall marry a virgin, Leviticus 21.13, a high Kohanim shall not marry a widow, Leviticus 21.14, a high Kohanim shall not cohabit with a widow, even without marriage, because he profanes her, Leviticus 21.15, that a person with a physical blemish shall not serve in the sanctuary, Leviticus 21.17, that a Kohanim with a temporary blemish shall not serve there, Leviticus 21.21, that a person with a physical blemish shall not enter the sanctuary further than the altar, Leviticus 21.23. That a Kohanim who is unclean shall not serve in the sanctuary, Leviticus 22.2-3. To send the unclean out of the camp of the Shekhinah, that is, out of the sanctuary, Numbers 5.2. That a Kohanim who is unclean shall not enter the courtyard, Numbers 5, 2 to 3. This refers to the camp of the Shekinah. That the Kohanim shall bless Israel, Numbers 6, 23. To set apart a portion of the dough for the Kohanim, Numbers 15, 20. That the Levites shall not occupy themselves with the service that belongs to the Kohanim, nor the Kohanim with the belongings to the Levites, Numbers 18, 13. That one, not a descendant of Aaron in the male line shall not serve in the sanctuary, Numbers 18.4-7. That the Levite shall serve in the sanctuary, Numbers 18.23. To give the Levite cities to dwell in, these to serve also as cities of refuge, Numbers 35.2. That none of the tribes of Levi shall take any portions of territory in the land of Israel, Deuteronomy 18.1. That none of the tribe of Levi shall take any share of the spoil, at the conquest of the promised land, Deuteronomy 18.1, that the Kohanim shall serve in the sanctuary in divisions, but on festivals they all serve together, Deuteronomy 18.6-8. Now I hope you're enjoying the learning as much as I am when I'm reading out these commands and laws. They're all for a reason. Um, today's so-called um, royal priesthood are concerned with taking as much money as they can um, it, you know, but obviously the Levites were banned from that for a reason, to stop them from corruption. And um, it's very, very important to realize that God wants to give you the best if you are Kohanim, and not just to give you money, which corrupts. 
So will you serve God or will you serve mammon? 